New seasons, new gear. Show the world what it means to be a fan in 100% authentic gear. Fanatics. Officially licensed everything. Get ready to dive into a new role of online shopping with the Finn's Tailgate. Whether you're a diehard sports fan or just looking for the latest fashion trends, we've got you covered. With a wide variety of products from your favorite sports teams to stylish accessories and home decor. We're your one-stop shop for all things tailgate. Our easy-to-use website and hassle-free checkout process make shopping with us a breeze. Plus, with frequent sales and discounts, you won't want to shop anywhere else. So come on in and join the party at the Finn's Tailgate, your new go-to destination for all things tailgate. And it ain't something that I'm planning. I dare you to say something. My focus is A1. Every dog has his day. It's been mine since day one. This is real grinding. I'm still climbing. Why you still trying? I'm still shining. It's real blinding. And I'm getting hotter too. Talking top two. I'm not a two. You let the pressure bother you. And I do what I gotta do. Let's go home. Good morning, Finn fans. Welcome to TFTG's Top of the Tailgate. I am your host. I am Ali the Persian. You know me the best. This is Top of the Tailgate. Welcome. It's 6 a.m. in the morning. Can you believe it? That is right, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody, make sure you hit like and subscribe. And while you're hanging out, check out some of our other content we got. We got El Capitan in the morning show. We got, uh, not morning show, what am I saying? Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Who knows when he's going to go? Check him out. You got Color and I in the morning show. I'm all excited. I was giving away credit to somebody that's not part of the morning show. Hell, hallelujah, Color. Hallelujah. Color and I going in the morning. Sometimes you get me and Color. There'll be every once in a while you get color and actually coffee in a cup of color sorry about that and then you got kp and lewis and you got shake money with the the you know drive by smoke lounges they got everything going on and don't forget about crypto newest member rock and roll the crypto some major content coming to the channel this season be ready make sure you put your seat belts on it's gonna be a rocky road everyone better get excited let me tell you so do me a favor. The easiest thing you can do right now is hit like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, right? If you want to donate to the channel, maybe you like the content, you want more of it. You can, you can become a member. Shout out to all of our members. We have three different memberships. Amigos, Familia, and MVP, right? I think Amigos, it's like 2 $3 a 
a month. It's really inexpensive. Check it out. You get special emojis that nobody else get to use. You get content exclusively to you guys before anybody else. Um, there's some additional stuff that you get with that that goes along with that. Definitely check out our memberships. We also accept Cash App, Venmo, or Super Stickers or Super Chats. You don't have to, but we really appreciate it because it's you, the audience, that we're all about. It's you guys that make this happen. And the more you guys do things like that, the more we can make things happen. And that's how it goes. So definitely, definitely appreciate all of you. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Tell everybody. And then, last but not least, shout out to all of our affiliates, right? Shout out to Fanatics. Fanatics officially licensed everything. Everything from this Tua jersey that I'm wearing. Yes, I'm wearing a Tua jersey. Everything from this sideline, official sideline hat by New Era, right? That comes in black and gray. I love it. I love it. It actually kind of matches my jersey a little bit. So definitely check out Fanatics. Use our link below, and I'll tell you why. It, it doesn't cost you anything more than going to the regular link. You get all the same deals, all the same hoopla, everything. Everything's the same, except it helps out the channel. It gives us a pat on the back for sending you, and it lets them know that you were sent by us. So please use the link below. We would really appreciate it. In addition, let's not forget about Backroom Collection. Backroom Collection up in this house, they got canvas artwork that you can order um, for various different Miami Dolphin stuff or other sports, and they also do custom stuff that you can hang virtually anywhere. Doesn't matter if it's a church, your office, place of business, the bathroom, bedroom, doesn't matter. Even outside on your patio, doesn't matter. You can hang this stuff. Definitely check out Backroom Collections. And I know there's a lot of content. You're going to be like, oh, God, I'm going to be so tired with all this stuff. I'll leave. What the hell? Well, don't worry. We got you. Check out Doobie Energy Drink. Check out the link below, right? All Smash, No Crash. Check out Doobie Energy Drink. They have a variety of different flavors. Um, their supplements have a lot less of that byproduct stuff that's harmful for your body. They are loaded with a lot more vitamins and all natural supplements that actually are beneficial to the brain and concentration and everything and giving you all natural energy. So definitely check out Doobie Energy Drink. And if you don't take my word for it, go check out Shake Money and his videos and his specific video where he actually reviews the stuff and tells you all about it. He swears behind it too. Um, so definitely check out Doobie Energy Drink. And if you'd like to save 10% off a of Doobie or Backroom Collections, use code hashtag TFTG at checkout. Save 10% off. And let's not forget, everybody, of TFTGnetwork.com, right? The best Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins content site you can go to. It's your t one stop for TFTG everything, everything. Um, all of our shows are there. You can go to the, directly to the playlist. Color, myself, and El Capitan are going to be putting out um, blogs and articles about what's going on during throughout the season. I'm going to be putting out a lot of stuff based in you know whatever storyline the season creates. I'll be talking about it. That's a good place to check it out. I'll be updating it weekly, right? Let's also not forget our merch store. You guys are the cause of our merch store. We're not, you know, the merch store is cool to us, but it's really because of you. You guys are the ones that created it. It's you guys who watch the show every day, comment in chats, come on the panels, come, you know, and in, in, in participate with the Finn's Tailgate. It's because of you guys that this merch store is created. Everything that's in that store, in some way or fashion, was inspired by you guys, the audience. So thank you so much. Thank you to the 5,000 plus subscribers that we have and counting. And, you know, we really appreciate it. We appreciate everything you guys do. We would not be here if it was not for you. So I would like to shout out to my co-host who I'm going to be bringing up here. Um, and he likes to feed his geese a lot and he's named them. So this song is called Feeding the Ducks. So we're going to get this nice, easy, calm music going. And we're going to bring up color. Color, this is top of the tailgate. How's it going, man? Pretty good, pretty good. Now, I pretty wouldn't good. recommend actually feeding the geese. I don't do that. But while I'm watching the geese and their daily lives, 
I am listening, jamming to some tunes like that. Absolutely. <laughs> kind of reminded me of like uh, <laughs> some Phil Collins at first. That, 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 you know, <laughs> had that vibe of Phil Collins right in the beginning, didn't it? Uh, so, yeah. Like that song, like that song, No More. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Well, no, yeah, I, I would sing it, but YouTube would probably copyright strike us if I did. So I, that's I, why I, I didn't. That's why I didn't start singing it. But yeah. Uh, anyway, so, um, Ali, um, I'm sorry to to cut you off there, but I've got to reboot my phone and wipe my screen because apparently it just keeps pushing stuff all over Streamyard, and I don't want to accidentally end the stream. So, uh. Oh, mm. just to let you know, I'm just going to reboot, and since it automatically adds me to the live stream, I didn't want you to be alarmed about coming back in. That's why I didn't do it already, because I didn't want to interrupt your monologue. So I'll be I'll be right back, buddy. Mm, okay, all right. Color will be right back. All right, no problem. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a crazy, crazy Thursday, right? We got bad news upon bad news. Um, there is a lot um that happened today um and it boiled over into the fan base you know people are commenting and going back and forth on twitter and twitter spaces and on youtube channels and you know yelling and screaming and crying and everything i'm here to tell you calma calma te calma please calm down everything will be fine you know what i mean and even after the end of it you got a tweet from said person which we'll get into in today's show we even said, man, I'm going to be ready for week one. I'm fine. No worries. Same thing happens all the time. Someone, you know, landed on his leg. You know, that's all that happens. No big deal. No surgery needed. You know, everything will be fine. It'll be okay. I'm starting to see that the Miami Dolphins fan base is very reactionary. We tend to speak with our reactions. Even I did. I'm even guilty of that. I'll admit it. Go to my Twitter. Ali underscore DA Persian. It's right there on the screen. Go to my Twitter, right? See what I posted about the Miami Dolphins. I stated at Miami Dolphins, it's time to go get this man. And this man that I'm referencing, just so you're aware, is this guy. Yes, I already have him in a Dolphins uniform. He's ready to go. Go get Dalton Risner. Go get him now. He would fix the offensive line. Not that I don't think that Isaiah Wynn can do a good job, because I know he can. But think about it this. Kendall Lamb, people are already saying that he's a good left tackle. He'll be a formidable backup to Tehran, right? No problem. They feel comfortable with him, right? You have Eichenberg in there, right? And it hasn't worked yet. The experiment has not worked yet. Go get this guy. You'll fix the problem, regardless if Tehran, you know, maybe we can slow down Tehran coming back by getting this guy, man. And it's not that I don't, I want to slow Tehran getting back. It's not that. It's a matter of I'd rather him come back 100% rather than partially healthy. You know, I need him for the long term, specifically the playoffs. But this kind of a guy, having this guy there next to a Kendall Lamb sounds a lot better than having a Kendall Lamb next to Eichenberg or... You know, or an Isaiah win. You know, I mean, Isaiah. Actually, Isaiah win is not bad. I'm not hating on the man. The guy is decent, but Dalton Risner. You know, he's made for that position. I just kind of, I think it it would work. You know, and it adds depth. You know, as well. So, yeah, Dalton Risner, go get him. I know the Vikings are flirting with him, and there might be something there, but it's not too late. He hasn't signed. You know, as of two days ago, he still hasn't signed. Go. Go hijack that shit. Go get him. Or if you don't get Dalton Risner, get somebody. Bring somebody in that can at least calm the fans down as well as calm the offensive line down. You know what I mean? But then again, Chris Greer, as he does, has reminded us that, you know, maybe we're the ones too worried about the offensive line than they are. You know, maybe they know something we don't. You know, maybe the reason we've seen Eichenberg so much and we have this PTSD of it is because maybe they have other plans for him. Maybe they're trying to showcase him. I was the guy that said, watch, the Miami Dolphins are going to showcase Cedric Wilson Jr. to create some type of trade action, right? And there's teams that could definitely use him right now. So maybe that is in the works. You know, there's a lot of different things. Maybe we're waiting for the Christian Wilkins deal to finally go through to open up the cap space before we go and make it. 
You know what I mean? But then again, as Chris Rear did not do anything as of yet, it hasn't really brought in the the veteran free agent signings like we would we would think to build depth. Maybe it was for a good thing that we didn't because of situations like this, right? So long in hindsight of it all, calm, keep calm. It's okay. The season hasn't even started. The season has not ended. If it hasn't started, it hasn't ended. You know, you know, see what I'm saying? If the ride hasn't even started, how in the hell are you getting off the ride if it hasn't even started yet? You know what I mean? The coaster, they haven't, they haven't even locked your seatbelt in and went up the first hill yet. Come on. It's okay. It's okay. We will move. And besides, we have Tua, right? We have Tua. We have Tyreek. We have Waddle. How can you say the season's over? And let's not even worry about the running back position because we'll get into that. I will talk about that today. No worries. We will talk about it. Color, how are you doing? Are you ready? Are you ready to get the show started? I think I am. All uh, right. My, my, now, my color, phone is not randomly pushing buttons without my uh, mm-hmm. consent. Now, Color, I know I might be pushing your buttons on some of my takes today. So keep calm, as I just told the fan base, to keep calm and let's keep moving. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm great, man. All right. So we are going to push through this show. Um, it's it's going to be our standard two hours again. or two. I mean, I can go maybe 10 minutes more, but we got to cut it down. All right. <laughs> So let's uh, let's keep it going. All right. So as we always start our shows, um, and let me get this banner up real quick. Make sure you hit like and subscribe for sure. The coffee of the week, as I've been doing all week, I've been promoting Publix Premium Coffee. It's a really good um, a premium uh, brand for a generic brand made by the the vendor. You know what I mean? Uh, I guess you would call it a vendor brand if you want to call it that. Um, mm-hmm. It's not really super expensive, but it does have that bold taste that some of the higher costing brands do have. So I, I have to admit that. Um, I'm drinking the bre- – actually, this is the Breakfast Blend by Premium Publix. Um, it's made by 100% Arabica beans. Um, like I say, it's a good um, – a little bit more premium taste than even Great Value was. And um, the price is not horrible. It's – it's right now they had it at Publix for buy one get one and for a pack of 12 it's 7.99. That's not too bad. I've seen more expensive ones than that. You know what I mean? So this is um in between a value brand like Great Value or Aldi's. Um actually I kind of rate Aldi's a little bit higher than Great Value to be honest. Um and it's almost a premium brand but not quite. It's like one line before. That's where I rank it color. So are you still I drinking don't. IHOP? Is that what you're drinking? Well, unfortunately, it was so good, I drank myself out of it. And as such, I had to fall back to the... Ten rest. cups color? Oh, Holy yeah. Holy crap, yeah, no yeah, wonder I, you're awake at this hour. I, uh, Jesus I had, Christ. <laughs> I, had to, I had to fall back to my, uh, my, uh, no, my the rest of the Tim Hortons that I had left. So mm. that's what I'm drinking to, uh, this morning is some Tim Hortons. Medium, nice, Tim uh, Hortons. Medium All right. Wine. So he's drinking some tin Hortons, eh? A. Eh. A. Eh. So how about right those maple from, leaves, eh? Right across from Buffalo, eh? <laughs> Niagara, eh? Uh, Buffalo is where the Canadians throw their trash out. All right. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding, Buffalo fans. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I didn't mean to poke the bear this morning. Uh, we can wait till late night exhale Saturday at 10 p.m. Wait for that. Um, so let's keep it moving here, right? Um, color. So any thoughts about your coffee of the week? Anything you want to add about IHOP or Tim Hortons? I'm sorry, Tim Hortons. No, but I am going to be buying the IHOP again. That was some pretty good stuff, especially Mm. at the cost, uh, at the uh, cost level. I would rather drink IHOP than McCafe, but that's only because I have PTSD of getting, Mm. uh, McKay Cafe coffee here in town and our McDonald's suck Mm. really bad. Mm-hmm. You, can you believe they sometimes even screw up breakfast? How do you screw up breakfast? Please tell me. I know. You know what I mean? Especially oh. when they, when they, you know, especially with their coffee, it's like they, mm-hmm. they, they start this whole gourmet McCafe uh, brand and all that precisely to, you know, uh, mm-hmm. suggest that gone are the days of that bad cup of coffee. You know what I mean? But 
Hey, you know, I also recommend going over to BK, bro. That BK Joe ain't ain't some bad stuff in its own right. Burger King, mm, interesting. Mm, mm, interesting. They've revamped their coffee over the years, and it, that BK Joe is some decent stuff. Mm, mm. Have you had? And I, I apologize if it's bad, but I've heard some good things, and I'm kind of wondering. I haven't had it yet. Have you had Wendy's breakfast before? I have once. How is it? Um, as long as it's done right, and you know, obviously, if the employees are following all the standards and stuff that they're supposed to, and it comes out right, it was pretty good. Have you had their coffee, or do they even have <laughs> coffee? Yeah, they have coffee, and it, it's uh, you mm. can tell that they just got on board with the whole coffee thing. You know, what I, mean? I got gotcha. you, uh, I got gotcha. but it's all right, it's sufficient, we'll say. I got gotcha. you, I got gotcha. you, all right. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving with our next thing. Cause for cleats. And today's cause for cleats is an interesting one. I will tell you that. Um, let me just bring this here. Today's cause for cleats is zero prostate cancer, right? And if you go to zerocancer.org, zero prostate cancer is the leading national nonprofit with the mission to end prostate cancer and help all who are impacted. Zero advances, and I, I do have to clarify, we're not saying no advancement. Zero, as in the nonprofit organization, advances research, provides support, and creates solutions to achieve healthy health equity to meet the most crucial needs of our community color. Right? Um. What their vision is, imagine a future with zero prostate cancer deaths and an ed end to pain and suffering. Our vis vision is a generation zero, the first generation of men free from prostate cancer. Help us get there and donate today is what they're asking. Why zero? Zero has been the front lines of fighting for a cure for more than 20 years. Together, we've made a significant impact on the fight against the disease. Zero is also rated four stars by Charity Navigator, America's largest independent charity evaluator. Zero offers comprehensive support for prostate cancer patients, starting with education. We provide millions of men and families with disease information through our website, printed materials, videos, webinars. Um, our Zero 360 team of experienced case managers help patients access financial resources, cut through insurance and Medicare red tape, and find emotional supports. For men with advanced prostate cancer who could not afford treatment, our financial assistance program provides grants to more than 48,000 men. We pioneered mobile testing for prostate cancer, alerting men across the nation to life-saving information and reducing prostate cancer morality rates through early detection. They continue to support early detection um, and free testing with local partners across the country. The Zero Prostate Cancer Run Slash Walk Series is the nation's largest event series dedicated to men's health. For more than a decade, the series has helped raise awareness and unite men and their families across the country as powerful force in the fight against prostate cancer. Zero helps uh, lead the nation dialogue on pro uh, prostate cancer through our awareness campaigns, social media website, and blog, Journey to Zero. Our, um, our regional chapters are the, are the boots on the ground to engage local communities and encourage grassroots action. At, as the na national leader in prostate cancer advocacy, they protect, grow federal research funding that has led to several key prostate cancer treatments for extending and improving the lives of men. Our annual summit brings together hundreds of advocates from around the country to make prostate cancer a priority within our federal government, our state legislator, and our communities. Want to know more about Zero or how to get involved? Send an email to info at zerocancer.org. Again, you can go to zerocancer.org uh, to find out more about what they do, how to donate, how to get support, 
education pieces about prostate cancer and things that you need to know. Um, if you're a caregiver, a lot of different stuff that they provide and the resources they provide. Or if you want to volunteer, definitely check them out. Now, here's something that's interesting. A lot of people question all this money that they, they get and they get donations. Where does it go? Well, funny you should ask. Uh, first of all, um, your gift for zero supports prostate cancer patients and families around the country. And I'm going to play this video for you guys to see with a special message. Here we go. Yeah, so just so you're aware, um, where the money goes? Well, that is a good question. And 85 cents of every dollar goes to programs and activities. By the numbers, $110 million dedicated to uncovering new treatment. They're now fighting for $120 million, right? 2,300 plus patients provided with free one-on-one -on -one help and 2.9 million plus in debt relief. 766,000 plus dollars patients and caregivers served through Zero's website, webinars, uh, patient support programs, and etc. Four and a half million granted to local organizations over the last 13 years for early de uh, detection, patient support, and research. If you'd like to know more, again, go to zerocancer.org. Um, it's a really good organization. They bring a lot of awareness, support um, for prostate cancer. Um, and I, I know I personally was affected by this um, uh, through a family friend of, of ours that I've known since birth, right? And um, he unexpectedly passed away with prostate cancer. And it's it's can sneak up on you and you never know. And it's good to at least get early detection. And as you saw in those, those photos of people and they got more time with their loved ones and whatnot. And it's stuff like this that I think it's important to get out there and to share with you guys. And when it comes to, you know, men and stuff, stuff like this can affect anybody. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, Persian or Irish, German, it doesn't matter if you're white, black, tan, it doesn't matter, right? If you're male, it can affect you. Affect you. Um, there's, I don't want to get into like exactly what prostate cancer is because I don't have the MD and YouTube won't like that since I don't have that those types of credentials, but you can research it. You can go to zerocancer.org um, to find out more about what that is and who can be affected. So I don't know about you, Color, but I think that's a great cause. What, do you have anything, final things to say about it? No, nope, absolutely. I mean, it's something that, you know, a lot of men have to deal with, you know, and, you know, you know, it's a great foundation uh, working towards a great goal. And uh, like Ali said, make sure if you don't, if, you, if you're in the dark on it, you know, uh, research at least, uh, go to their website, research at least for yourself as to the nature of prostate cancer. Uh, because again, uh, as with everything, early detection and awareness are the keys to defeating it so definitely One, no problem and and as we say on every episode after every cause for cleat just so you're aware we're not affiliated with any of these causes 
um, we are just bringing awareness to them. So if anybody in the community may fall under something that they're helping out, they can at least maybe get some help or get some resources or education if they need it. You know what I mean? Um, with that being said, uh, if there is a specific cause that I have not talked about on one of my shows that you want to shout out for, please put it in the comments below, not the chat, because I can't see the chat for after a while. But if you put it in the comments, I'll always be able to see that. So please put it there for us to um, to see and me or color will see it and he'll let me know or I'll let him know and we'll make sure we give it um, a shout out on one of our episodes. So please do that. Um, color, let's keep it moving, right? What in the world? The next segment here. What in the world, right? I got a lot to talk about what in the world. So let me bring this up. Yeah. So let's start off where we left off yesterday with what in the world. So I talked about Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk having an MMA cage fight, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about this, right? Well, I got exclusive photo of them preparing to fight in Rome. Cool. And I'm not going to lie, bro. I'm not going to lie. At first, I said... Mark Zuckerberg looks shredded. He looks like he's taking it serious. But holy crap, Elon Musk looks like he can take a he can bring a fight, bro, in this photo. What do you think? I mean, yeah, that's what the that's what living good does for you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, bro. I, if they actually pull this off and they're really gonna fight, right? If they're really going to, I I really think that. They, they, they should televise it. This should be, like, either televise it or... Yeah, they could televise it. Both Facebook and um, Twitter could have it live. Right. You, watch, you know what I mean? And Yeah, exclusively um, on those two platforms only. That, yeah. That'd be crazy. That would be crazy, right? I think it's awesome. Um, I, I am curious to who actually would win. I honestly think that Elon Musk could actually bring the fight um, to Mark, but... Mark is the one that I've seen all the workout videos. He's the one I've seen him be getting shredded. And, and let's, at, and let, and let's mm -hmm. be honest. If these two end up going into the ring and looking the part mm -hmm. and having a decent fight, this is no different than any other two grown men that fight in, in that sport. And as such, would actually bring them a little legitimacy. And what that could do for like to know that in this world two billionaires could do that you know and actually yeah. put out a legitimate product as far as a fight goes that is hilarious yeah definitely next what in the world color thank god we're not playing in kansas city right because if i'm in the kansas city watch out for those super fit man super fans you never know who's taking your money Kansas City Chiefs superfan was indicted Wednesday on bank robbery and money laundering charges, right? This legitimately happened. If you wow, know, you uh, don't say. this guy is a very famous superfan for the, for the Kansas City Chiefs, and he was indicted on money laundering charges as well as bank robbery. Basically, what he was doing is he was laundering the money through local casinos. That's wow. basically what he was doing, according to reports. So definitely... Uh, Inch, weird interesting news you know i it's not all the good all the time you see kansas city news like this you know what i'm saying right right so definitely interesting other interesting news breaking news shannon sharp is joining first take with stephen a smith her uh at sports rep uh, report I and just andrew saw McCarthy. That. i just saw this that will be interesting who is gonna yell at who and how loud that's what i want to know in fact i kind of like this because in my opinion there hasn't been somebody that makes stephen a smith uncomfortable and i think shannon sharp could be that guy to make him more uncomfortable i like to see stephen a smith squirm or dislike takes or really try to bring it to somebody because that person is bringing it to them and i think that shannon sharp is that guy what do you think about this do you think it's well, good I'll, bad, just say, I'll just say to shannon sharp you know oh Stephen a's big time he don't bet no cases of mountain dew that's all i'll say to shannon sharp you better come with your game buddy i believe you can i'm a big believer in shay shay and his his uh debate game 
But you're going into the big time now, Shay Shay, and he don't bet no Mountain Dews. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's true. He don't. He don't bet no Mountain Dews for sure. Um, two more to go. One is a special one, which I'll do at the end because I, it's a certain thing I want to point out on it. This had to do with the Super Bowl. Now, we talked about this yesterday, Color, um, on top of the tailgate. I mentioned that no worries to the fans. Taylor Swift is not the halftime show in uh the super bowl and i believe this year's super bowl which let me confirm this um one second i want to make sure i was right journey is it journey <laughs> oh no 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 um let me find it here uh here we go all right so the next Super Bowl location um, for 2024 is in Allegiant Stadium, Las Vegas, right? Um, and let me explain why this is important. So they have, and actually let me just bring up the what I was going to bring up, breaking three-time Grammy Award winners There's are on the shortlist. There's four people on the shortlist right now. You have Bad Bunny, rapper Jack Harlow, three-time Grammy Award winner Harry Styles, and Miley Cyrus, right? Now, I think, personally, it has to be Bad Bunny. Hands down, it has to be Bad Bunny. Because, let's let's look at it. First of all, and this is why I'm going to bring it Bring, I'm going to make this make sense, Color. You ready for this? It has to be Bad Bunny because, one, he is a three-time Grammy, uh, Grammy Award winner. They're playing in Vegas. And Bad Bunny himself, being a Latino, would attract one of the large... In that whole area, from the southwest to California and where Las Vegas is located, there is a lot of Latinos in that area. A lot of Latin Latinos. So the, my, the NFL would be banking on the Latino community to take part. Um, and I think there are a lot of other Latin artists that live in that area or, you know, or popular uh, enough to be able to play alongside him in this uh, halftime show. That's part one. Part two, out of these four people, Bad Bunny is the only one that is top five and most digital downloads made of his music. Right. Taylor Swift is number one. That's why they offered it to her, right? But the next person that's on that's on that's on the list that was even being considered is number five, and that's Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny has over 44 million fans in the U United States as well as in different parts of the world. He is one of the biggest international superstars, not just with the type of music he brings, which is uh, considered a Latin trap or reggaeton, you know what I mean, style music. Um, He's also an entertainer. Well, I might he's actually at, like he, that. He, yet sometimes, uh, he's actually a professional wrestler color, right? He's really big with the WWE community. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you're bringing faces from all over the world and bringing attention to the Super Bowl, right? Rihanna, which I think was last year, was that last year's um, uh, Super Bowl? I believe it was Rihanna. Right? I couldn't tell you. I was using the restroom. I believe it had the largest viewership than any other halftime show and like in comparison. I think the next one was the year before that was had broken the record. But she broke the record. I feel with this guy's traction and what he does in the entertainment industry and how the fans gravitate to him and he puts out blockbuster after blockbuster, you know, expanding his horizon beyond music and being an entertainer and, and whatnot right and all the things that he does right i think this guy would be a blockbuster hit at the halftime show um and i could think of a mile long list of different artists not just bad bunny and being lit a latino or um that style of music or wh whatever or whether it be a reggaeton or um latin trap or whatever you want to call it but there are other artists that R&B artists or pop artists or, you know, it can be a collage of different artists and different styles of music that could collab. And I think it would be a huge hit. Um, I would rather see that than 
Miley Cyrus, my opinion, or the other two guys who I don't even know. Um, I mean, Jack Harlow is is kind of up there, but I like Bad Bunny better. And I don't even know who um, Harry Styles is, to be honest. So that that's just me. You know what I mean? I, I'd rather listen to Bad Bunny at the halftime. I think it would be great. You're actually expanding to a huge community, um, let alone if you want to go international. We've talked about these international um, events that we throw. We always have a game like in London or Germany, and we've even had um, – uh, you know, a um, a game in Mexico City for a couple times, I believe, right? I think the Raiders have played there. I think it was the Raiders in Kansas City at one point played there, right? Um, that's pretty big, bro. That's pretty big. And that being said, you could attract all those viewerships from all over. It, it would be massive for the NFL, just in my opinion, if it's Bad Bunny. And I think that's the smart move. What do you think? Anything? Anything to add to that? Uh, not really, because I don't really know of any of them. So, and it's not because I'm old and old fashioned. It's because I just don't really care for those genres. However, uh, the genre you described uh, that Bad Bunny falls into is something that I probably would be interested in. I didn't. I just needed to know that that's what the the guy was doing. So, uh, yeah, yeah they, obviously, there's going to be some cross appeal if you're even going to. You're talking about a style that even a guy like I I might enjoy. So. You know, there you go. I mean, yeah, Nothing. and and uh, let let's say you know, I'm not going to get into the inter intra politics between Latin and communities and all that. But if you're talking about Vegas and bringing about it, bringing in an international, uh, you know, Latin superstar, then why wouldn't that appeal to the Miami community too? If you catch my drift, <laughs> that is definitely true. That's definitely true. I and mean, so, 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 in other words, maybe it's up to teams like us to help the NFL decide who they bring in. Yeah, there's that script for playing. <laughs> See, I, I can I always know. bring it back to the Miami Dolphins, bro. I can always bring it back to our team, bro. <laughs> yeah, I definitely I'll understand find a that. Way. <laughs> I definitely know where you're going with that. And you know what? It, imagine that right if we make it to the big game and it's bad bunny and let's say they they line it up with other superstars that are from this area or whatever it'd be like a home game color be like a home game well if you that's, don't mind me true. asking not to sound um, this isn't meant to sound shallow uh mm -hmm. but which particular latino community uh does he take his heritage from he's puerto rican He's primarily Puerto oh, Rican. So you're talking about, I mean, you're talking about this side, not like, you know what I mean? You're talking about Caribbean style almost. You know, oh, that kind oh, yeah. of Latino. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. So that would appeal to the, I mean, that would appeal to people in Miami just, just probably more than somebody out mm -hmm. in the Southwest. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can definitely understand. Definitely. But I mean, to be honest, though, um, even the Latin communities in Southwest, um, he is very, he's very popular. I know. He had a concert in Mexico that I, I think they had either too many. There was an issue with well, it. Sure, because there's a lot there sure, still, because so. there's a lot of shared culture through it through the same language, of course. Oh, yeah, know? definitely. Definitely. He, like I said, he's an international superstar. So even people in England, Germany, and all those countries and stuff, they even know who he is. Like he's made he's expanded not just right. in the reminds Caribbean me or South of, Florida he, he area. Reminds, reminds me of a guy like Manu Chow. Have you ever heard of Manu Chow? I have, yeah. We even you and I have had conversations oh, about that. Okay, Manu good. Chow. I mean, yeah. I mean, I am absolutely enamored with that 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 mm. artist, man. That is some great stuff, man. You know. Yeah, definitely. And you know, it's it's uh it's be really interesting who the halftime show is going to be. Whoever it is, I I just don't want it to be Miley Cyrus. I'm sorry, I <laughs> Miley Cyrus. No, I don't want Taylor Swift. You know, I I want it to be something epic, and I kind of feel like. Yeah, can I we bring like, in an artist that uh, that people can learn something from? You know what I mean? Like they're gonna learn from Miley Cyrus. You know, I was a big. I was a fan of her dad, though. I kind of liked her dad. To be well, honest. sure. So I'm not saying I'm not trying to take her away from her abilities and and the family yeah. abilities, but like really, like that's the culture we're familiar with, bro. I want to learn something, man. You know what I mean? I want to like that's expand true. my expand my horizons. You know? Yeah. See, Miley Cyrus would to me would seem so milk toast, bro. <laughs> I definitely understand. All right, one last one before we wrap this. Uh, what in the world? 
um up so this is interesting best winning percentages color among afc teams since 1970 who's at number three color uh, probably the people that come in below the Pittsburgh Steelers and somebody else, like the Miami yeah. Dolphins. That is true. The Miami and other, Dolphins. And other, and other storied franchises of this great league. Yeah. So the Miami Dolphins is at number three with 570%. The highest is the Steelers, who currently since 1970 have the highest winning percentage, which is about 61 you know about 61 percent right and number nine is the titans now why i said number nine is because it's very interesting what the number 10 team is and i'm hiding it on purpose right that number 10 team color is none other than the bills right uh, who's at number and two i can't tell who's at number two the patriots color you, oh, okay you know okay. That. They, okay they won for almost a whole decade obviously they're going to be up there Right. I forgot. So yeah. the Bills are at number 10, right? They've only won 48% of their games essentially in total. Wow. Right? Not even above 50%. And they want to talk to us. We've been having above 50% win record since 1970. Unreal. Right? Best win percentages, right? So just want to put that out there. Um, so I just poor wanted bills. to, yeah, poor bills. I've already hit on them or not hit on them, but I've hated on them enough uh, t today in this show. So let's uh, let's actually go ahead and uh, stop the hate. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's start. It's time for some football, right? That's the banner we need right now. It is definitely time. Or some football. So, color. Let's do what we always do. We're gonna start off and talk about the stock up and down report. Along that, right. we're gonna talk about some major issues that happened today. It's okay. We'll. I'll try to give up some updates and everything. This is fun. I actually been quite. Uh, I've I've grown to enjoy this stock up down report, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I I kind of like it too. So, um, I like how they uh you know how they structure it and everything so it's interesting gives us some tidbits um i got some bad news today too and i'm not really happy about it so we're gonna have to see what happens but i got some unfortunate news and it's not good and i think miami is gonna have to finally uh do something so let's actually talk about that right so the miami dolphin stock report day two of the joint session with the texans dolphins pass rusher jalen phillips has second dominant day going against offensive tackle bullied him as a rookie yes an offensive tackle who bullied him as a rookie he's getting his revenge on just want to put that out there um so phillips had his moments last week in joint practices against atlanta but didn't consistently play up to his talent level then came this week joint practices against joint texans the two practices where the former University of Miami standout turned the volume up on his impact, dominating each of the joint practices the way Cameron Wake or Jason Taylor would in their prime. I think my confidence as a pass rusher, rusher has increased a lot, obviously every down, but especially as a pass rusher. Phillips said after Thursday's practice, this week I was going against George Fant. I faced George Fant in my rookie year, when he played for the Jets, and I had no answers for him at all. The boy was doing me all game. So stock up pass rusher Jalen Phillips. As previously mentioned, Phillips was forceful, forceful for the second straight day. If we were keeping stats, Phillips would have had two sacks, three to four pressures, and one fumble recovery uh, type of game. He performed like a type of player who keeps offensive coordinators up at night knock knock defensive coordinators for our division jalen phillips has arrived just gonna put that out there mm -hmm. next person keeps keeping it on the defensive side of the ball safety javon holland holland is being asked to do a ton in vic fangio's scheme 
which has traditionally been built around safeties, and he is performing at a relatively high level in the tasks being given to him. Holland intercepted a deep pass from C.J. Stroud along the right side on Thursday and was leaned on in coverage of receivers often because of Miami's shortage of cornerbacks. I'm going to put this out right, right now. Javon Holland, in my opinion, from what I've seen in red and everything, has had multiple interceptions in multiple days in practice. It's almost like an everyday occurrence now, right? So rock and roll, I think he's going to be pro bowler, you know, all, all, you know, American, whatever you want to call it. I think he's going to be at top of his game. What's up, El Capitan? Welcome to the top of the tailgate show. What up? What up? What's going on, fellas? Just uh, popping in, figured I'd hang with you guys for a little bit. Get some stuff. I just got some stuff done in the studio. Going to have something to drop. Probably tomorrow around five or so, maybe a little earlier, maybe around four or five or whatever. Um, you mean today, gonna, right? Yeah, today. Yeah, today. So <laughs> it'll be, it'll be, uh, it's something I've been working on. So I hope everybody likes it. Cool. Cool. I'm excited for that. We're um, going over um, Omar Kelly's uh, um, article about stock up, stock down with uh, today's practice. Or actually, yesterday's practice. I'm sorry. Um, yep, so, and so far for the second day in a row, Jalen Phillips tops the list. Yep, and Jalen uh, Javon Holland has been uh, rocking it as well. Now we're moving to the offensive side of the ball. Guard Lester Cotton, the former Alabama offensive lineman, followed up a solid per preseason performance against the Falcons with two straight solid days going against Houston Texans. Cotton might lack the mobility some of the Miami's other contenders for the starting left guard um, spot possesses, but he's rarely ever pushed into the pocket on pass blocking snaps. Two impactful performances in the two final preseason games could allow him to secure a spot on the 53 man roster and might help him lock up the starting left guard spot. So that's what I've heard. Lester Cotton can play specifically in the pass game. So, well, you know, it's it's not too dissimilar to what we've seen out of him in his limited snaps last year. He's not really a guy that's going to get upfield in the blocking game, but when you got to pass the ball, he's immovable. So it's I'm glad to hear that you know he's he's pushing it around. I mean, listen, Dolphins fans have mega concerns with the offensive line in the community right now. They are infuriated. They are fighting. Uh, people are mad at Chris Greer. They wanted Dalvin Cook. They didn't get him. I don't know how Dalvin Cook fixes the offensive line, but now with yesterday, Teron Armstead getting nicked up, although it looks like he'll be back for week one, doesn't matter. It, it reminds us that Teron Armstead is not going to play all the games. Yeah, and we so have Dolphins that. fans are tripping. I yeah, keep calling it a canary in the gold mine uh, or the coal mine, uh, Cap. Yeah, we have that PTSD um, from last season, and we want him to play the whole season. And I even mentioned it earlier on in the show. You know, I'm I'm trying to keep calm and make sure everybody just stays calm. Let's go with the flow and see what see what the rest of this preseason you know does for us. But I'm telling Chris Greer, as I said on my Twitter, let's go get this guy. He's already in a Dolphins uniform. Throw him in. Let's go get him, please. Vikings haven't signed him. They haven't done anything like they, you know people thought they would. Um, he's still available. Go ahead and hijack that shit and go 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 send Stephen Ross's helicopter and pick his ass up and bring him to the stadium. For real, well, do whatever uh, you gotta do. What was the other guy that was like with the Broncos too? Uh, that was that was him. He was. With oh, that was him. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. Martin Reiser. That's who I want. Yeah. Because this is what you can do. Let's say people say that Kendall Lamb has shown enough that he can play left tackle, right? Okay. You still haven't really fixed uh, 100% your left guard position, right? You put Dalt uh, Dalton Risner there. You have a solid foundation piece, so you're still keeping your three pillars technically. And then everybody else can focus in on backing up um, either the left tackle position, which is a lot, you know, in some cases can be easier for them but also the right tackle because Austin Jackson has showed stuff in this practice and I shout out to him. Um, he does get some good reps in. Um, 
it's much better, but it's still not 100% pretty too. You know what I mean? So well, I, I I'm concerned because I get it. It seems like every offensive lineman the Dolphin fans want to bring in here is for this left guard position. But to me, I think we've got enough guys to figure it out. We've got Dan Fink. First of all, we know Robert Hunt is going to lock down the right guard. Okay, mm -hmm. we we know that Connor Williams is going to be the center, backup center. I'm kind of concerned about, but hopefully. Eichenberg can play the backup center role. I know he's been taking some snaps there and did so early in camp. Uh, but as far as left guard position, we've got a plethora of guys that can handle that at some mm -hmm. point. I mean, it's not we're not talking about left tackle here. You're talking about Dan. I Pete. understand, but here's the issue. You with just this said talk. Cotton was playing good. You've got yeah. Robert Jones. Ro I know Robert Jones is decent enough. I would imagine Robert Jones is the backup right tackle, but mm. I'm more concerned with a backup at right tackle than I am with left guard. I know Dolphin fans alike want to just plug play starter, but what's that do to all these other guys? It's like we've got a million guards on this team and not enough tackles. Maybe yeah, the young guy Ryan Hayes can be our right tackle. I know he got some work at it, uh, but he's been playing more left tackle. Maybe he's the backup left tackle and Lamb's the backup right tackle. I, I know Lamb's probably the swing guy, but mm -hmm. I don't know. But here's the here's the thing, El Cap. I hear where you're coming from, but ninety percent of the pressures are coming from the middle, bro. And what's happening is they get past that left guard, and it's straight to to Tua, right? Because if you have to worry about the right tackle position, then the fullback or the running back that's helping in pass blocking is helping out that right tackle. Who's helping out the left guard at that point? You understand what I'm saying? So, well, but what, I mean, my, my, how much have we seen from Dan Feeney? You know what I'm saying? I, I, no one's really talked. He hasn't looked great. He hasn't looked great. The reports, but both Omar and Alan Pupar have said he really doesn't look like a starter, to be honest. And Robert Jones, in fact, Robert Jones on Alan Pupar's third 53-man um, roster projection... He is the odd man out. He's going to be cut, according to... Um, over whom? Uh, over... Let me see who that was, Color. Let me actually go to that real quick. I don't want to get off too, base, too much basis, but let me bring it up. I can tell you who it was. We talked about it yesterday. Wasn't it yesterday or day before yesterday, Color? Uh, I'm not really sure. Here it is. I found it. I'll tell you who, I'll tell you who Alan Pupar has um, for the offensive line. Just give me one second. Here we go. So he has Teron Armstead, Connor Williams, Austin Jackson, Robert Hunt, Liam Eichenberg, Isaiah Wynn, Dan Feeney, Kendall Lamb, and Lester Cotton. He has... So is Cotton uh, making it over over Robert Jones? Yeah. Or Robert? Yeah. Everybody else, including Cedric Ogabwehi, Ryan Hayes, the seventh rounder, Keon Smith, um, Jerron Christian, James Tunstall, and Alame Yulave. He has both of them, all all those guys out. He's off of them. So mm -hmm. that's his current projected roster. So that's and that's somebody you know. Alan Papar and Omar have been at every camp, so I'm kind of taking a little bit of what they say at faith, but I'm also reading other reports that kind of back that up too. So I understand where you're coming from, but you know we'll have to see. It hasn't looked pretty, and that's why I'm thinking, okay, if we can just solidify the left guard position officially rather than working with this um this uh what, what do you want to call it um this experiment with liam eichenberg and stop messing with that you could at least have two-thirds of your offensive line completed and then you all you, you you would have to do is now make sure that the running back or whoever the fullback is that's helping in pass protection you know kind of keep an eye on the right tackle position they don't have to worry about you know, them coming up the middle or or getting past that left guard at that point. I just so. look at the team as it's currently sits. We've got a lot of options for guards, and we have a right guard that's going to definitely start and hasn't had any injury concerns. God forbid, mm -hmm. knock on wood. It's mm -hmm. We have a question at right tackle. Who knows if Boston Jackson will work out? And we have a question continuing at left tackle with – with uh, uh, Tron Armstead and his injury issues, we need a guy who can play left tackle and or right tackle 
and have that person on the roster. We need to tackle, bro. I'm just saying. Now, Lamb, okay, fine, but Lamb's going to back them both up. If if Lamb's in there starting at right tackle because Austin Jackson is playing bad and Teron Armstead goes down, now we put Lamb over at left tackle or what? Do they put Wynn out there? I get that, they, that Wynn has had some tackle experience. I don't know. It's just, to me, Dolphin fans are so concerned about the left guard where – I would imagine that a left guard is easier to find than a left tackle. There is another left tackle out there, I believe, um, that we could look at maybe in a trade situation. But I'm not. I have to look at the money, bro. And that it's Cincinnati has a really interesting situation right now. Cincinnati, well, Cincinnati has just paid like three guys, three offensive yeah, well, linemen. Yeah, they they paid a lot, and in back to back years, they paid for a left tackle. Um, that's kind of like the situation. So I think, I believe, you know, you got guys like Leo Collins that might, you know, get cut or maybe they can trade off or, um, God, who was the left tackle last year before they got the guy from Kansas city? I can't think of his name, but that might be an option. There might be some options out there. So we'll see. We'll see what, what's up with that, but let's keep it going with this article. I don't want to lose track of that. Um, so I mentioned Lester Cotton. The next guy that is on the top performers list, because there's four of them total, tight end Julian Hill. And I believe this guy is an undrafted rookie. The Campbell University standout, who the Dolphins signed as an undrafted rookie, has caught our attention from time to time. But during Thursday's joint practice, he served as a reliable target for Miami's quarterbacks. He caught a touchdown pass during seven-on-sevens in the red zone and has been just as impactful as Tyler Croft, Eric Saubert, and Elijah Higgins with much fewer opportunities. Um, he'll have limited opportunities in the final two preseason games, so Hill needs to make every snap count if he intends to earn a spot on Miami's practice squad. Very interesting. I love to hear that. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure Lou, will, Lou will love to hear that too. Yeah, he. if you heard yesterday's uh, top performer, the number one person was Durham Smythe. I'm sure oh, that made his eyes was, I was just about to say, uh, I'm loving hearing what you just said too, Ali, because you notice who he didn't include in the list of guys that uh, Julian Hill was being compared to his performance with? Durham Smythe. Thank you, which means that Durham Smythe, in my estimation, has separated himself from the group. Definitely, for whatever reason, either experience in the system, uh, camaraderie with Mike McDaniel, whatever it is, he has it's separated really himself from the group. He's Definitely. been separated. They got rid of Mike Gusecki to roll with a more blocking scheme tight end that has pass catching abilities. Thurl Smythe fits that role. Yeah, definitely. So, cornerback, these are the stock downs, just so you guys know. The seven-year veteran Miami uh, Eli Apple signed to compensate for the injury to Jalen Ramsey suffer, uh, suffered has a quite quiet camp up until this week. Yesterday, he allowed a touchdown during Houston's red zone work, and on Thursday, Nico Collins scored a 65-yard touchdown with Apple trailing him the entire slant route. If Noah didn't struggle against Collins as well, he likely would have used this week to lock down the starting spot opposite of Xavier Howard. But right now, it's any quarterback's game. So Eli Apple did not look good. That is not good what I wanted to hear. Um, and then the other person that didn't do so well, which was the other offensive tackle, Keon Smith, with Ron Armstead injured and Austin Jackson taking limited reps during Thursday's practice for unknown reasons, Smith's status was elevated, and he struggled to provide proper blocking for Tua uh, during this session. Um, in the situation period that ended the practice, he allowed Texans pass rusher Jonathan Greenard to record a would-be sack that could have spoiled the come-from-behind drive um, right after Tua had just extended extended it by converting a 4th and 10 with a 11-yard completion to who other? River Craycraft. So very interesting. That's the stock down, um, the stock ups. I'm glad to see Jalen Phillips is finally in his groove. Javon Holland, I'm telling everybody he's going to be a pro bowler or if not more. Um, guard Lester Cotton is really good to hear. I'm glad he's starting to find a role in this offensive line. 
and I'm glad to see uh, Julian Hill there because I heard he's pretty big size, and you know people were kind of excited to see what he can do. So definitely awesome there. Now there was some bad news going into this camp as well. Um, let's talk about the Teron Armstead injury. Unfortunately, the Miami Dolphins Pro Bowl left tackle was injured on the first play of the team period in a joint practice with the Houston Texans. The news on Miami Dolphins tackle Toronto Armstead was a lot better early Thursday evening than it was earlier in the day. NFL Network reporter Ian Rappaport indicated on social media that the injury to Armstead's right leg would require no surgery. There was an accompanied, uh, accompanied by an update from Armstead himself who explained what happened and expressed his determination to be ready for the season opener against the LA Chargers at SoFi Stadium. So I, uh, he did post a video of him on Twitter, you know, walking around on his own power, everything like that. Everybody was really shook it up when they brought the cart out there. But people got to oh, remember, yeah. they play it safe because if something is injured, you can mm -hmm. make it worse by walking. So they get you on the cart, they get on there, and they, and they check out your, you know, everything and do what they got to do, MRIs, all that stuff. So oh, sorry, yeah. Ali. No, that's okay. But Armstead basically said that got landed on during a team run in practice today. Things like that happen in the trenches. We just get up and get back to work, and that's what I do. Mindset of week one. So he is he is ready to be back for my uh, for week one, um, and that's what he's going to work to. Here's the reality about the Miami Dolphins. I know everybody's freaking out because of how it looked, right? How it looked with him on the crutches and, and him on the cart and all that stuff, right? Here's the reality. And it's already been admitted almost basically from Mike McDaniel, as well as every player has admitted it. The Miami Dolphins are being so cautious with every injury this year. And I know this could be you know, argued or debated on a broken take episode. Um, but maybe some of that has to do with what transpired during the season last season, right? They're taking everything much more serious. Even when they brought Toronto Armstead off the pup list and he was fully 100% healthy, was approved to go 100% contact, whatever, they brought him in like one step at a day. Okay, today we're just going to put your, your shoulder pads on. The next day we're going to put your pads on. And then the third day, we're going to have you just jog on the sideline. Like, what does this guy have to do to get action? That's my point. That's what they're doing with all of these injuries. Even Mike McDaniel said that he's keeping Waddle out, even for his own better good, because they, they really don't want to risk it. They want they want to be super cautious, and they don't want to risk Bro, further I, injury. I, Go ahead. I, 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 I don't know, man. Like, I get it. It makes sense mm -hmm. on paper. But I don't know, dude. Like, it's such a weird thing. We've seen this type of bubble wrap around players before only to have them when it comes to running full speed and getting hit full speed they immediately get hurt you know chad ocho cinco used to say it he was like you got to build up your your scar tissue you got to build up your you know what did he say color i can't remember exactly what chad ocho cinco used to say uh, oh, I you gotta, oh, you gotta, you gotta put a you, callus. Like, you gotta put a callus on your body. Exactly. It's like when you, you know when I used to work construction, there were injuries. Let's say it, it's obviously it's the question between hurt and injured. But um, but you know there were like falling off a tie beam and breaking a leg on the ground. That's an injury. But cutting my hand or smashing my pinky finger with my hammer when I've got four other fingers and a thumb left to still set a nail. No, that's not an injury. I push through the pain. I come to work every morning, even with a smashed pinky, and I keep nailing nails. You see what I'm saying? It, 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 like, that's what Teron's trying to say. He's like, there's stuff you just deal with. Like, there's, in, there's you know, things that happen in the trenches that, like, all of them understand is, oh, that's just going to subside in a day. You know, like jamming your finger as a wide receiver. That's a good example. I've, so jammed, I, I've jammed every one of my fingers probably 10 times. Now it's like a routine for me. When I jam my finger, I know exactly how long it's going to take to heal. I know how exactly how long it's going to take to feel better. And I know what I need to do to advance that process. Go ahead, Kat. So um, I'm thinking that like, okay, logically, 
it's like, hey, we're going to roll out Toronto Armstead, Jalen Waddle, with no jammed fingers, no soreness, no nothing. They're going to be 100% healthy, as healthy as they can be for the long season. That has sense in it. But also to the other side of it, I don't know. I mean, these guys have been playing football a long time, so I, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say. It's just if you're not if you're not getting that physicality in, I just worry about it being able to not do damage immediately. But I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's something to it. I know the sports medicine scientists through, through the dolphins and everything like that is top notch. Maybe mm-hmm. they're onto something. Maybe this will yield better results. Um, I definitely think it'll help with us finding our backup left tackle situation. You know what I'm saying? So there's mm-hmm. there is good for that. Uh, well, it's giving guys like that, like Hill, even though he's at the tight end, more opportunities because Jalen Waddle isn't out there catching balls. But you know, I look at a guy like Tyreek Hill, and I think Tyreek Hill doesn't take any days off, even in the off season. He's out there doing sprinting. He's, you know, it's just so much 100 miles an hour all the time with the guy Mm -hmm. that he's calloused up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, yeah, it's like if you do get an injury and you you try to baby it, it won't get better. You got to push through it and got to make it stronger. Mm -hmm. It's the only way. I understand. And you know what's scary? And this is what, this is why the day even got even worse. The injuries did not end there with Toronto Armstead. No, Brandon Pilly, my favorite undrafted free agent outside of um, Aubrey Miller, right? Also had an injury today. Brandon Pilly suffered what appears to be a head injury. However, people are saying it's more of a neck injury. Um, during one of the late 11 on 11 periods, the media struggled to see. But the concern for Pilly's health grew when players from both teams took a knee and started praying. Um, Pilly walked off the field, luckily, on his own and was scheduled to go undergo an MRI. If Pilly can't play in Saturday's preseason game against the Texans, the Dolphins might be forced to play uh, Davis, Zach Seiler, and Emmanuel Ogba longer than intended because of Christian Wilkins embarking on a hold-in and hand, uh, and hand Jalen and T- Twyman. Josiah Bronson and Randy Charlton are the only other defensive linemen left to finish out the game when the starters and the prominent players are benched. <sighs> well, that that kind of is unfortunate. I thought the guy was having a really good camp until this happens. He did walk but off aren't on we his supposed own, to though? see. Aren't we supposed to see the starters this week anyhow? Yes. You know That's exactly what he's saying. They're just going to probably have to play longer nah. than anticipated. Um, nah. But, you know, hey, look at – look. Look, we got – Capitan, you remember the biggest kid that was out of shape in high school and what he looked like? Like there was yeah. always a t- there was always a kid that was like really big and totally out of shape. And remember how the pads fit on him and all that? Like yeah. they, had, they were too small because like you could only get pads so big and all that, you know? That's – this guy Twyman, bro. That's what he looks like on the field. I, 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 I swear I to God. I disagree with you. Caller, I disagree with you. I'm going to disagree. <laughs> Twyman doesn't look like that. Twyman looks like he's super short, but he has these ginormous, like Raekwon Davis style arms. Yeah, he that, does. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. what he has. Now, he's now, super I, short, but he has now, the massive arms. That's right. Now, I'm trying to be a little funny, but he, he does have really, really good hand technique and, and drill technique. Like, He's solid, you know what I mean. Actually, in his in his skills, but yeah, he's right, he's yeah. not bad. Um, you know, if you want to compare it to what he kind of looks like, go. I, I grew up in the eighties and nineties, bro, and I used to go to arcades and play video games a lot. There was a game <laughs> called NFL Blitz. Did you guys ever play NFL Blitz? <laughs> yeah, he looked like a character from NFL Blitz. One of the football oh, no. players that they're you know like pile driving a player or, or the quarterback when they get sacked or whatever. That's what he looks like with these. Big, no, but you know, Ali, you were you, you were there for the stadium practice with me, bro. You saw him come out. We, we both colors, thought, colors we both thought he was one of the players' kids, dude. That's yeah. I it I kind of questioned it because of how short he is in comparison to Zach Siler or Christian Wilkins. He was All like right. like a good foot and a half shorter. That's how short he is. Right. Yeah, I remember, remember seeing him at practice. He was hanging around them too. He was all over him. 
Yeah, and remember oh. how, like, you know, as a kid, you might dress up in a uniform if you're, you're like, I could see, it wasn't odd that he had a uniform and pads on. I still could have thought he was one of their kids because maybe the kid likes to wear that stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, let's keep it pushed. Let's keep it moving, gentlemen. So, mm -mm, some uh, other news going on. Secondary help coming for the Miami Dolphins, question mark? The Miami Dolphins have reportedly had a free agent visit with a veteran free agent familiar with some other defensive coaches. The Miami Dolphins have been hit hard by injuries at corner, which would explain them hosting veteran free agent, free agent Bryce Callahan for a free agent visit, according to ESPN Field Yates. Didn't Callahan play for the Colts? I could be wrong about that. Hold, um, hold on, Ali. Has Call yeah. Do you remember Callahan playing not just for the Dolphins, but anybody? Do I remember? No, him you playing? don't. You don't. Nobody does. Who? I mean, this guy Callahan. I get it, but you know, I understand because Apple's not looking as great as they thought he was. All that stuff. I don't know. To me, DB is obviously super important in this defense. It's so important well, that it seems definitely. like they're going to continue to sign more and more DBs again and again and again. But mm -hmm. I, I, the Dolphins fans. Are, are pulling their hair out knowing that a defensive tackle just went down and, and probably going to be out a little bit. And it's a guy that's a bubble guy. So we should probably be looking to bring depth in there. We have an offensive tackle that's not going to play any of the preseason. And we don't have quick you know, answers at left guard or backup tackle. Why aren't we bringing those in? No, 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 no. We're going to bring in another cornerback. Dolphins fans are not happy about this and neither am I. Well, that means that means that leaves two possible scenarios. They either are just confident with what we got, or they're waiting on something. Those are the only two possibilities now. So Callahan had extensive them. history with Vic Fangio. After starting his career with four seasons with the Chicago Bears from 2015 to 2018, when Fangio was his team defensive coordinator. The uh, three more seasons with the Denver Broncos from 2019 to 2021. So that's where the connection is. Okay, uh, so now this could be a Fangio guy brought in here as a practice squad guy, as a guy to keep around on the team, only to help the younger guys, the Eli Apples. The uh, well, Eli Apples not that young, but he's not. You know, he's not an old guy either. The Noah Big Benogany's even you know, any of these guys to help them with the scheme. Because remember, they lost Ramsey, who was that guy helping coaching them on the field. Now, Ramsey's still helping on the sidelines, explaining the stuff, and thank mm -hmm. God. But out there in a live thing with, with a guy like Callahan that knows it to say, here's where you are, this position, number this, stuff like that, maybe that might be why they're breaking a bit. Well, I kind of think what it is is that they're, because of all the injuries that they have, because look at it in this perspective, right? Outside of Cam Smith, who just who picked up a knock, we will call it that, even though he's playing in the practices and everything. Um, you got Nick Needham, who is still injured on the pup inactive list, or whatever you want to call it, and he's still injured, hasn't practiced all season or all, all training camp, and more than likely is going to remain on the pup list until he can come off, maybe four games in, right? And then you got Keon Crossan, who's injured as well. Justin Bethel, who has been injured as well. And both those guys are your special teams guys. So maybe this guy is a special team contributor or a guy that could sign for the veteran, veterans minimum because that's what he played for the last season. You know, you, you sign him to a $1 million, $1.1 million deal. And then when those guys come off the pup list or whatever, oh, okay, here, we're going to go ahead and wave you now. You know what I mean? That's right. what I mean. Right. When are we going to catch a break, dude? I mean, geez, it's is is there is there no position safe from getting injury with the Dolphins right no, now? No, I mean, and it's not, and Lord, it's not, bro. and it's not just the Dolphins, bro. It's across the NFL. Injuries are bro. happening all over the place, bro. You right. know, the Can Bengals are not say... even going to get to start their season with their starting quarterback. You know what I mean? I'm just giving you an example. You know right, what I mean? Right. And you look at the guy that um, today. Um, I forget where it was. It was either Dallas or somewhere. No, it was in the Eagles game today. Eagles wide receiver. Cleveland, I think is his last name, landed on his neck and head catching a ball, bro. They had to cart him off. Luckily, he has movement in his extremities, but still, man, injuries are happening all over the place. And I understand that, 
you know, we're we're looking at ourselves and we're all concerned and everything. But let's just calm it down, bro. Let's just well, take again, a step back again, and just let me, calm again. Let me let me explain why I think it's down to those two scenarios because Fangio told us he's that he needed to find the talent. Right, mm -hmm. so he's steady bringing in all these DBs. Like every other week, we're hearing about another couple DBs or a linebacker coming in. He's steady. Mm -hmm. They've obviously given him some power to just bring guys in to do that. So he's steady Great going point. along doing his stuff, right? And McDaniel is not doing anything about the offensive line. So it's again, it comes down to either they're confident with what they've got, or they're waiting on something because Fangio is not. Well, that makes sense, Keller. You know what? You're, I can't give you any pushback there. I would imagine that if Chris Greer heard from Mike McDaniel, I need another offensive lineman, they would have got one. And just like that, if Fangio is saying, we need these other DBs in here, this is what we're struggling with, go get me this guy. Right. Go, he go already told the fans guy. what his program was, was to find yeah. talent. You know, And that's mm -hmm. precisely what he's working to do. So obviously they've given him some flexibility to order up players. You know what I mean? Likely McDaniel mm -hmm. has the same power to order up players from Greer. And, he, and so he's not doing it. So either he's confident with what we've got or they're waiting on something that might cost yeah. a little more or, or require a, a bigger trade or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It must be something because they certainly weren't going to give the money to Dalvin Cook. So, uh, and to be honest, the more I look at it, bro, I wouldn't want to give Dalvin Cook the money. I would rather, you know, give up draft capital and uh, give the guy like this money right here. He even has experience running away from the Jets, so I'm not worried, bro. Get this guy. Oh, here we go. Uh, here we go. Every morning, morning now, now, I, I, it's every I, morning now, huh? Every morning, I'm going to play this until I, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to believe in it so much, it, I will believe it into existence, Color. I will believe Listen, it into existence. I'm, I'm right there with you, Ali, because that guy's <laughs> going to want a contract. And if you're going to give like a three-year, you know, including the year you have him, so like a three-year extension for a four-year deal, Mm -hmm. It's a young guy like that who will be 27 in the last year of his contract. And, look, I mean, the guy is good, bro. I, I agree look, with you. If you're going to get a running back, get, get, get him. Look, all offseason, the fan base was all behind Tua saying Tua is him. And they're saying, we don't worry. We're going to make the Super Bowl. We're going to make the deep run. Tua is going to stay healthy. Tua is going to take us to the promised land. If that is the case, which you've got me to be a believer, I'm even wearing a Tua jersey which, uh, to be honest, I bought in the middle of last season. And I do believe in the kid. When healthy, I think he can definitely do it, right? If this is the case, then what are we worried about the goddamn draft capital? Because that first-round pick is going to be nothing more than a glorified second-round pick in the first place. Exactly. Go ahead and trade it for the best player you fucking can get, and that guy can make shit move. That guy brings respect to your running game. Ooh. I know we have an A-chain, but Im imagine a A-chain Jonathan Taylor backfield. Imagine that. Ali is now, Friday hot, man. I, I, he's I, like I, ready I, to I, go, I, man. It's Friday morning, I'm, I'm, and I'm fucking hot. You know what I mean? I'm on it. I'm I'm right there with you, buddy. Let's you got, do you it. You got Let's the censorship beat to, uh, to add on to that over there when, before we... Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, my bad. I'm sorry. But, it, but, but I do rate this show as not being appropriate for kids regardless, so they know about <laughs> Good it. Deal. So. Good yeah, deal. So. I would say this, though, Ali. Uh, I don't know about giving up a first-round pick. But I would go with like a second and something, you know, like a second and a but that fourth would or a be, fifth but or that a that would sixth. be a first round. If, if everything comes true, what they're saying, right, that pick at the very highest, in my opinion, should be like number 28 or 29, bro. That was the you know exact who, number you know I was who will be there? Right there you on that who, jersey you just showed. And you know who's there at 26, 27, 28? What? Nice defensive tackle. That's who's there because we're going to lose one. We're, we're going to lose maybe two this offseason. We don't have any defensive tackles under contract next year. And getting a, a nice young guy, even if you re-sign Sealer and freaking Braquan or just Christian Wilkins, you're still going to need another young guy to come in to replenish and, the ranks. And you could and that's franchise. Where you, that's where you get him. 
and you can franchise Christian Wilkins for cheaper than what it's going to cost you to keep him in a long term contract. Or we no, 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 I agree, him I agree with you. Yeah, 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 that that we do whatever yeah. we want. I'm just saying, if the guy really wants more than $20 million, I would rather just franchise him. And that's why we haven't really spent the money like what people want us to do. Yes, we want to re restructure a deal that works for both people, right? And we want to open up that cap space so then we can really do the moves that we need to. But at the same this time, I'm not, why, I'm not opposed why am I gonna, to this? This was my, why, this was my, this was my gonna, take from one hour ago. Uh, you know, yeah. I'm why am that. I, why am I gonna lock our our team down to a, an amount that you want when I can automatically get you cheaper even without your decision? You know what well, I mean? I, it doesn't make. I'm hundred percent there with you. Because then so, he'd have to sit out, which he's not gonna do. But it still no. doesn't change that you're gonna need somebody young to not be spending twenty million dollars a year on. Cheap, young, and replenish the ranks. Because if you, even if you franchise tag him, you're still gonna have to come up with that money. That probably means you're gonna miss on re-signing one of those other two guys. I mean, which still may be enough. But either way, you got it. You got to get a young guy in defensive tackle this year. Well, okay, get him in the I've second. I've always round. said Waddle cures all of that, dude. You're, dude, Just color saying. trading Waddle is a terrible decision. In any case of the scenarios at all, because yeah. Waddle is the replenish young talent that you're now paying for years to come for yeah. Tyreek. You've got Tyreek, then you have Waddle as he becomes the seasoned veteran. That's great. And mm -hmm. you don't have that in your defensive tackle position right now. And you might not have it come the end of the year. And you're going to have to make some tough decisions at that position and replenishing it with a young first round pick is exactly how you do it actually here is a, a thought process right so technically we got tyreek solid down for a three-year deal right this would be his second year and then we got one more year with him right so that wide receiver that i keep talking about from ohio state marvin harrison jr right yeah he might be a top pick at some point but if you're if it's if he comes out the year that we're off of Ty Tyreek, right, and we can recoup that money, that might be a guy to bring in. And I'll tell you why, why it makes sense. You still got Waddle who's young enough, right? And in the news lately, and what's coming out of Buckeye reports is that one thing that Marvin Harrison Jr. has been working on this year is his speed. And guess what they have him clocked at now? I don't know, 4.2. 4.3. Close. It That's is close. 4.3, which is super fast still. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. you could very, you could, that's a guy you could pick up in the, not next year's draft, but the year after when he comes out. You know what I mean? You could do that. And again, it still looks here's like what draw. I think in your Jonathan Taylor take. Yeah. Fangio's, Fangio's not going to be upset, but I mean, look, Fangio is going to want that first round pick to, to, and don't you want to give Fangio first round pick for his defense? You yeah, know what I'm true. saying? That's true. I also got to look to see what defensive tackles are coming out, too. That's another thing we have to look at because we don't know look. what's coming and if it's even a – like this year had a lot of defensive tackles that we could have grabbed, a lot of good ones in that late first round area. Like we saw what the Eagles took, uh, the mm -hmm. guy from uh, Georgia, I yeah. believe it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, that could have been our guy had we had our first round pick, for example. That's exactly right. right. You know, and that's and, the kind of thing I'm thinking that Fangio would be pounding the tail for. Either that or a DB, you know, yeah. a, a corner, which I know we got Cam Smith, but as we're finding out and always have known for years, you can never have enough DBs. That's for damn sure. Or a linebacker. Definitely. Maybe if you're in the high 20s, you one of these great off-ball linebackers falls right into your lap because they're not so, you know, uh, uh, desired anymore. To me, you can get Jonathan Taylor with a second, a sixth, and a seventh, and th and that's perceived that's a haul for a running back in the in today's day and age that they're not going, they're not fucking doing running backs. You know, mm -hmm. you said, all right, here I'll give you a second round pick and Jeff Wilson. There you go. Or if you just want picks, here's these picks. You know, mm -hmm. that's true. Now you asked. um El Capitan, you asked specifically, why do we keep bringing these cornerbacks in? Why haven't we addressed the offensive line? Omar actually talks about the secondary struggles that the secondary has been having in these last two practices. And what he says about uh, yesterday's practice, 
The entire day was not peaches and cream for Miami Dolphins defense. In fact, the unit struggled for most of the one-on-ones in red zone periods, and the Texans receivers exposed how much Miami's depth at cornerback has been watered down by injuries since camp began. Corner uh, Noah um, uh, Igbenagi uh, struggled for most of the day, which started with him getting beaten deep for a touchdown by Texans receiver Nico Collins during one-on-ones. But Collins didn't discriminate uh, because he also beat Eli Apple for a 65-yard touchdown, which produced off a 15-yard slant, which um, earlier we mentioned that Eli Apple was chasing him the entire time, like from start to finish, right? What happened on the coverage? Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say that's a knee-jerk reaction on Omar's part because, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, no, no, but nothing goes up in a straight line. So as as much as Noah has been outperforming his normal uh, mean, uh, mm-hmm. there was bound to be a day where he's just not on. I mean, let's, yeah, let's but be he's real. been he hasn't been on for two days. That's the argument with Noah that he's talking about. But well, um, listen, I'm gonna go I'm about to drop out here, but I'm, I'll leave you guys with this, and I hope everybody's having a great morning watching the, the show and make sure everybody's hitting the like button. But um, I don't know. Listen, it, it's practice. Th- these guys are going to definitely have their due. They're, they're really showing off their rookie quarterback, their rookie wide receiver, their new weapons and stuff like that. To me, trade Noah Igbenogany and Jeff Wilson for Jonathan Taylor. That's what you do. That's mm-hmm. how you get it done right there. It's not and a, bad and a third round. And a third round pick or a fourth round pick or something like Shake that. Jake won't like it, but that's not a bad move. See, Jonathan Taylor for Jeff Wilson, Noah Igbenogany, and a third rounder. How are they going to say no to that? That's the move, boys. All right, fellas. I'll see you guys later. Make sure everybody's hitting the like button. Great show, Ali. Great show, Color. I'll see you fools later. Thanks. Thanks. Later, Cap. All right, so color. Let's finish this article, and I think I may have to shut it down early for today's episode. Just so you know that, okay? Um, unless you want to take the last thirty minutes uh, on your own, no, if you like. Not a problem at all. I mean, you. I mean, as far as shutting it down, you're good, man. All right. Good. So let's uh, finish this article real quick. So as I was saying, um, for uh, what happened on the coverage wasn't clear. But the highlights, the safety issues Miami have had all camp, struggling to find a quality starter to play next to Javon Holland. Deshaun Elliott has been impressed and struggles from a range standpoint. Uh, Brandon Jones, who is working um, his way back from knee injury, uh, he and the surgically repaired last October is nursing as unrelated injury and has been shelved for the week. Williams, who is also working his way back from the injury that kept him sidelined all 2022, hasn't uh, gotten substantive, um, yeah, substantive uh, reps during 11 on 11 work, leaving Elijah Campbell and Veron McKinley the only challengers to Elliott. Campbell flashing playmaking ability and range all the time the past two days, but also struggled at times. Well, yeah, they've been struggling. You know, this is a new defensive scheme for them. You know, they're learning. You know, I would rather see them struggle now than later in the season. I believe in Vic Fangio is going to bring this team together. He's going to find the talent and get them to move as a cohesive team and work together. Right. I think they're going to they have a lot of time to polish it up. At least three weeks they have to polish it up. Absolutely. That's I think that's the Um, part a lot of people keep uh, missing. mm -hmm. Judging Ali is the amount of time we still have. Definitely, definitely. So I'm gonna. I know El Capitan was kind of concerned, and he's he's angry himself in a sense, right? But let's just take a calm step back, collect your thoughts. You know, let's let's just under let's just see what happens here. We would rather this all happen in training camp than hand happen in the middle of the season. Because in the middle of the season, what are you gonna do, bro? What are you gonna do? You don't have time. You have to worry about the next game. You don't have the people you can bring in, you know? So let's let's see what happens here. But I'm going to leave everybody with that. Let's stay calm. Keep it moving. Make sure you hit the like button. Check out our links below. Check out TFTG Network. Um, and until the next uh, Vince tailgate, or actually top of the tailgate, um, we'll see you later. And check out tomorrow uh, on Saturday. We should have, we should 
have a late night exhale episode as well. So with that, I give you a do and everyone have a wonderful night. Ends up. Yeah.